Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. After deliberating for seven hours yesterday and finding her guilty of intoxication manslaughter and intoxication assault, there's another job for the jury. It must now consider how she should be punished. Prior to their deliberations, the jury heard emotional testimony from the sister of the man killed in the crash and from a survivor. Paul Venema now with some of that testimony. The damage caused by this fatal crash went way beyond the twisted wreckage of the vehicles involved. The wreck's emotional toll clearly visible as Valerie Velasquez Palau, whose brother Mario was killed in the crash, testified. Everything changed. My parents will never be the same. We were always a close family. He was, he was everything to us. He did everything for my mom and my dad. Her brother and four friends were leaving a parking lot and were crossing a sidewalk, attempting to enter the Loop 1604 access road when his car was hit broadside by an SUV driven by 24-year-old Rosalinda Olalde. She was drunk and had veered from the access road onto the sidewalk. Four passengers in Velasquez Palau's car were critically injured, including Gwendy Murillo. You think about that day every day? <laughs> It changed my life because I, I just feel like nothing's the same. Losing somebody who was that close, it's really like losing a brother. The testimony wasn't entirely emotional. The defense called an adult probation expert to discuss the conditions of probation. At the outset of the punishment phase of this trial, he told the jury that Olalde had no criminal record and she's eligible for probation. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. First, good news is that Texas now has the ability to test for COVID-19. State testing is conducted by public health labs throughout the state that are a part of what is called the Laboratory Response Network. There are 10 public health labs within the Laboratory Response Network in Texas. Testing for the coronavirus now available in some parts of Texas with more cities with the ability to conduct those tests by the end of the month. That's the word from, for, from Governor Greg Abbott, who provided an update on the state's response from Austin. Labs in Austin, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Lubbock, and El Paso are already up and running. Abbott says labs in Tyler, San Antonio, Corpus Christi, and Harlingen will be operational by the end of the month. Metro Health officials say that they have the test kits, but they need two to three weeks to validate them. And when all of the labs are up and running, Governor Abbott says Texas will be able to process more than 125 COVID-19 tests a day. Methodist Healthcare is an example of what local hospitals are doing to protect their patients, medical staff, and others from the spread of COVID-19. Jesse Degollada reports anyone coming to their facilities will notice what's changed even before they walk in the door. Some entrances here are now closed to control access. Then, once inside... What we're doing is screening for coronavirus to keep everybody safe. Methodist Healthcare is now asking visitors a few questions. Do you have a cough? Do you have a fever? Uh, do you have a significant travel history? All of those coming in while we were there said no. If they'd said yes... We're going to ask them to wear a mask when they're inside our facilities. But if they answer yes, and they're going to the emergency room, rather than potentially expose everyone in the waiting area. We're gonna ask those people to put on a mask immediately. Everyone I spoke to told me these days, screenings could be and should be the new normal. Stay the rest of the world, stay San Antonio, Texas, and so we can continue living a normal life. So I think it's a good thing to check everyone who comes in here. To the hospital, miss a hospital. Especially a transplant hospital where the most acute cases are in recovery or awaiting surgery. A mother who came to share her lunch with her son says it's a safe thing to do. Oh, it's a, it's real good, really. I mean, it's a precaution. Precautions in effect for the foreseeable future at all Methodist healthcare facilities. We need to keep the virus out of the hospital as much as we can. Baptist Health System is doing much the same thing, similar precautions, like here at Downtown Baptist. 
And the goal, of course, is much the same, to protect medical staff, patients, and others. So how do you know if you should go to the hospital? Well, the Chief Medical Officer for Methodist Healthcare offered some advice during this morning's briefing, and we have that posted on our website, KSAT.com. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jesse. Another big story today, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick using the anniversary of the Battle of the Alamo to criticize current plans to restore and redesign the Alamo site. Tomorrow will be the 184th anniversary of the Alamo's fall. But Dan Patrick says the Landmarks Master Plan is badly off track, placing blame on the General Land Office led by Commissioner George P. Bush, which oversees the project. The lieutenant governor criticizes the designs he has seen for the plaza. He's opposed to moving the cenotaph. But District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino says the city's Historic and Design Review Commission has already approved the move. Now, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, being reviewed by the Texas Historical Commission, and uh, those are the final steps in uh, what we hope to have uh, uh, begin here in just a matter of weeks. So we're, we're ready to go. We're ready to start the construction. Other elements of the Alamo Master Plan include restoring the church and long barracks and creating a visitor center. San Antonio firefighters say they have a pretty good idea what caused a fire that destroyed a commercial building just north of downtown this morning. Fire crews getting the call around to the 400 block of San Pedro around 10. And when they reached the scene, the building was filled with flames and those flames did a lot of damage. We're told the building is no longer structurally sound. This location, no stranger to firefighters. They tell us they've put out several fires here and in all of those cases, the fires were intentionally set. A woman on the southeast side of the city without a place to call home after being run out of her house in an early morning fire here. The fast moving flames had spread to the homes next door and those neighbors ended up rescuing her. Sarah Costa tells us considering how fast this home was destroyed, it was a good thing the neighbors called. There goes my house. Yeah. Take of the house the machine. There goes my house, man. Christine Cervantes watched as flames consumed her home that she purchased 21 years ago. The San Antonio Fire Department says the home is destroyed. The fire broke out at 3 Thursday morning in her southeast side home in the 400 block of Shank Avenue. When crews arrived, her home was already being devoured by flames and had spread to the home next door. Firefighters were able to put out the fire in the attic of her next door neighbor's home and saved it. But that wasn't the case for Cervantes. I've lost everything. Now the sun is up, Cervantes and her family or friends are cleaning up to see what they can save. And you can also see how severe that damage is. My clothes, my car, everything is gone. This was where my grandfather's table was. Cervantes says the biggest blow was losing the heirlooms her grandfather left behind for her. Grandpa's table's gone. Oh, don't worry I about know, that stuff. Cervantes' mother comforting her. She is thankful for her neighbors, who she says helped her and her dog to safety. I was stuck in the backyard, and, and my neighbor just grabbed me, man. She just grabbed me over the fence. Cervantes says she had just got a job after looking for several months. She was supposed to start this week. Then she woke up to losing her home. However, she is remaining optimistic. Thank the Lord I'm okay. Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. We have now learned the name of the woman who died in a crash with a utility pole on the city's north side yesterday. San Antonio police identified her as 61-year-old Rosalva Tamas. According to investigators, she was killed after another vehicle crashed into hers in the 3500 block of West Avenue. The crash sent her car right into that utility pole. Witnesses told police that the 83-year-old driver that hit her had been driving erratically. Officers say the man told them he did not remember the crash even happening. No word yet on any charges. And San Antonio police looking for a driver they say hit a man on the city's northwest side last night. Officers responded to the scene on Vance Jackson near I-10 just before 10 o'clock. The victim, we're told, was crossing the street when an SUV hit him, then drove away. We're told the victim was taken to the hospital but is expected to be okay.
We want to take you to a traffic trouble spot with Time Saver Traffic. What you're looking at is uh, the Topper Wine uh, exit here at uh, I-35 at Judson. Uh, there is an accident. You can see it on the left-hand side of the uh, the northbound lanes there. Uh, fire on the scene. It is backing up traffic. This is already a spot that backs up at this hour of the day. So with this accident, you can expect a really long commute trying to get out of town heading northbound on I-35. Meanwhile, it is pretty outside. 72 degrees at 609, but we do need some rain. Yeah, we do. The but unfortunately, we don't have any good chances of it. At least we have a nice sunset to look at, right? It's beautiful out there right now. You can open the windows if you want, but uh, do be aware of the high pollen count. Aquifer down just a little bit, about three and a half feet above average, but mold is high now. The count of 1,300 oak still in the count, low for now. We know oak season's about to really hit us. Ash is on the low end. Right now we're sitting at 72 degrees, comfortable. By 8 p.m., 62, so cool it off quickly, and then by 10 p.m. will be 57 degrees. All right, we'll talk more about the rain chances and our latest drought monitor coming right up.